Alright lads, we're back with another War Thunder vehicle review. And once again, we're looking at the Soviets. Now this is the T-55 AMD-1. This is similar to the premium T-55. It has the same composite armour add-on package on the hull of the vehicle, but it lacks the composite armour on the turret. In its place however, it has the Drodged Active Protection System, which theoretically protects you from incoming ATGMs. While the T-55 AM is a premium vehicle, the AMD version is a tech tree vehicle. And if I remember correctly, this tank is the lowest battery rating which you get an active protection system. But, like all the other tanks currently that do have an active protection system, is this tank large with just a gimmick? Or is it worth your time grinding it? Well as always, starting with the basics, this tank is a battery rating 8.3, rank 6 medium tank, located in the Soviet tech tree. This is quite favourable, battery rating 8.3 is probably the best battery rating at the minute in terms for grinding. You avoid the 9.7 spam. And you do see down tees to 7.7 .7 quite often. So it's quite a seal club in battle rating. And this vehicle certainly does perform well at its battle rating. Anyway, to unlock it, you're going to have to grind out 220,000 research points before purchasing it for the cost of 590,000 silver lions. Being a tech tree vehicle, it of course has an extortionate crew train cost. In this vehicle's example, it's 170,000 silver lions. Then again, for the expert and ace qualifications, which at battery rating 8.3 isn't the end of the world if you don't get them, but I would always recommend at least getting the expert qualification if you can afford it. Anyway, for the expert qualification it's 590,000 silver lions, and for the ace it's 2,100 golden eagles. In terms of customization, you have a plethora of camouflages available for golden eagles, with my personal favourite being the Finnish summer camouflage. That's the basics lads, let's get on to the mobility and survivability. And starting as always with the engine, this tank is powered by an engine producing 690 horsepower, combined with the vehicle's weight of 41.5 tons. It gives the tank a rather poor power to weight ratio of 16.6 horsepowers per ton. Again, at battery rating 8.3 this isn't the end of the world, but like many of the Soviet tanks at battery rating 7.7 .7 and above, you do feel incredibly bloated, especially low speed manoeuvring. And it is this mobility that is the major downside with this tank. As we can see, the top speed of 51km per hour is fairly average, it's pretty good actually. The reverse speed of 8km per hour is pretty awful, but that's kind of just standard for Soviet vehicles. So like many of the Soviet and Chinese and Japanese tanks even, the tanks are fast in a straight line, but the second you press the A or the D key, it kind of just bleeds all your speed and you feel like a massive pig basically. So while the M in the name of this tank stands for modernised, certainly don't expect it to be zipping around like an XM1. We then go on to the survivability, and this tank being based on the T55 chassis, has a crew of four men, with a driver in a hull, and a gunner, loader and commander in the turret. While having one extra crew member compared to most Soviet vehicles might give you the impression that this tank is pretty survivable, the fact that their tank is so small and the crew is so cramped together actually means that a penetrating round is pretty much certainly going to knock out the tank in a single hit. Again though, if you're used to playing Soviet vehicles then this is just standard. Anyway, at the beginning of the video I spoke about the active protection system, and if we look at the side of the turrets quite far back, we can see the Drodged Active Protection System. This consists of 8 rounds, which individually fire when it detects an incoming anti-tank guided missile. It's worth pointing out however, that the detection cone of the tank is only 40 degrees from the front of the vehicle. This means in practice you have to have your turret pointed directly at the tank firing the ATGM at you, in order for the missile to be destroyed. And it's the same case with helicopter ATGMs you pretty much have to be looking straight at them. Unlike the APS on the Challenger 2 and Makerva Mark IV, which have pretty much a 360 degree field of view, again, this tank is limited to a 40 degree detection cone, pretty much wherever the gun barrel is pointing. Now, the Drawed Stacks Protection System can counter any threat travelling between 70 and 700 meters per second. This allows you to counter almost all ATGMs. Most anti-tank guiding missiles in game are actually rather slow. I think the fastest we currently have are the Vikiers, which are something like 620 meters per second. However, they're only found at the very high battle ratings on the cancer attack helicopters, so no need to worry about them. It's worth pointing out, however, that most heater fest rounds at battle rating 8.3 will have muscle velocities over 700 meters per second. So this APS system is only really effective against ATGMs. Unlike the APS systems at top tier, which work against everything pretty much apart from APFSDS rounds. But if we take a look at the armour itself, and remember this is based on the T55 chassis, which still used road homogenous steel armour. 
So we're battle rating 8.3 against APF SDS rounds. This armor usually wouldn't be too protective. But as I said, we do have a composite armor add-on block at the front of the vehicle. But as you can see, against the T-55's own APF SDS round, it only gives you 307mm protection. At close range, enemy tanks will be able to punch straight through this. But at ranges up to 1000 meters out, this composite armor block should in theory allow you to bounce some incoming rounds. However, the situation at the turret is much different. It has no protection whatsoever in terms of add-on, and it is purely relying on that thick steel armor. This means heater fest and APF SDS rounds will have no problem punching through this. Now the turret front is quite bouncy. You can see you've got several machine gun and optic parts which will with um, volumetric cells. Do not like them and you can bounce the occasional round just from getting lucky. But again, don't rely on your enemy being a bad player. So in general, the survivability of the T-55 AMD isn't amazing to be honest lads. Like all the APS systems in the game, it's still largely a gimmick. And as you've seen from the armor viewer, most contemporary guns will be able to punch straight for you. If you do get down tier to battery rating 7.7, then of course you are going to club. But that's more due to Gaijin fail to solve the issue of battle rating compression. An issue that has been in the game since the battle rating system was introduced many years ago. But to know what you're saying, Sarko, enough of this negativity. Let's get on to the positives. Well the tank is armed with a 100mm DT-10 2S cannon. This has 42 rounds of ammunition which is pretty good for a vehicle of its size. With a first stage ammunition rack of 18 rounds. The gun is fully stabilised in both the horizontal and vertical axis, but unfortunately, like all Soviet tanks seemingly, the designers didn't understand the importance of gun depression and turret traverse rate. The gun has an average gun elevation of 16 degrees, but a terrible 5 degrees of gun depression. This makes it hard to play hull down, which would be very beneficial to this tank, as you could hide that weak hull. But alas, what can you expect from a civilization that put a man in space before they made the first fucking toilet roll factory. For those wondering about that, Yuri Gagarin went into space in 1961, but the first toilet factory only opened up in 1969. There must have been a lot of shitty ass Russians running around. Anyway, like all Soviet tanks, the turret rotation speed is god off on this thing as well. 11 degrees per second is pretty terrible, there's no other way to say it boys. But apart from turning and elevating and depressing the gun, the gun's performance is very good. Our battle rating 8.3, as you'd imagine we don't have any thermal imaging, but you do have night vision, as well as a laser rangefinder, something which is very helpful in this tank. Anyway, going on to the ammunition, and unlike top tier vehicles that have a stock heater fest grind, this tank has a stock APDS grind, which isn't too bad in my opinion. The 3BM8 travels at 1450 meters per second, and can penetrate 291mm of armour at a range of 500m. Like all APDS rounds, it's got high penetration but rather poor post penetration damage, so be sure to aim for crew members or ammunition storage. We then have probably my favourite round, the BR412D. This is an APC BC round, which contains 94 grams of TNT. It does travel rather slowly at 887m per second, but we have a laser rangefinder making it very easy to get the range. At a range of 500 meters, this round can still penetrate 220 millimeters of armor. And with that great post penetration damage, this round is pretty much a one shot kill if it penetrates. Even though this tank does have more advanced ammunition, I tend to use the APC BC round just because it's, it's funny to just kill people in one shot. Especially at battery in 8.3 and upwards where the meta is to cripple the turret and then finish them off with a second shot. But with this round, one shot into the hole, and they're pretty much gone. We also have the 3BM25 round. This is a short rod penetrator, basically an early APF SDS round. This travels much faster, 1430 meters per second, and can penetrate 307 millimeters of armor at 500 meters. I carry a few of these rounds just in case I meet some very heavily armored opponents, but in general, the APC BC round is more than enough to get through the armor at this battle rating. Ironically, the APF SDS round is best used in down to 7.7 when you come up against something like the M103 or some of the big heavy tanks where the APC BC round struggles to go through. We also have the Heater Fest round, the 3BK17M. Like the APC BC round, this does travel rather slowly, although it is better than that. With a muzzle velocity of 1085 meters per second, it is fairly slow, but again, you've got a laser range finder, so it kind of negates that. At 500 meters, we can penetrate 390 millimeters of armor. Because it is a chemical energy warhead, that penetration does not change with range. And then finally, 
we have the 9M117 ATGM. This is a barrel launched ATGM, which is beam riding. It travels at 370 meters per second and has a maximum range of four kilometers. It does have a rather potent TNT warhead containing nearly five kilos of TNT. This large warhead allows a missile to penetrate up to 600 millimeters of armor. I do also generally carry a few of these ATGMs around with me, mainly for shooting at helicopters and other long range targets. But in general, in terms of the offensive capabilities of this tank, I stick with the BR-412, the APC-BC round. While at such a high battle rating you would expect to use an APF-SDS, I think this tank is so good with the uh, APC-BC round that I can't not use it, it's just that good. So, should you ground this tank? Well, the Soviet lineup at battle rating 8.3 is already very strong as it is, and this tank does make it stronger. Not because the Drodged Active Protection System is actually going to help you out in that much, but the fact that this tank is a relatively fast, relatively heavily armoured, and armed with a fairly punchy gun. This tank is a very good backup vehicle at battery rating 8.3. I have played it quite a lot, I have been enjoying it actually. Battery rating 8.3 is probably my favourite battery rating for just chilling at the minute. Top tier in both ur and tanks is pretty toxic, so if you want to chill and have a good time and grind out the Soviet tech tree, then battery rating 8.3 is the way to go. In terms of grinding it, you're not missing out if you don't get it, but if you do play a lot of battery rating 8.3, then you may as well. It's a good backup to the T55AM premium if you have that, and I have certainly been enjoying playing it. Now, if you like the review, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing, and if you really like the channel, then consider becoming a channel member, like Tomat and Salad, Deboa LX, Just Someone, Destroyer 1805, Dr. Bob, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonzi. Thanks again, lads, for watching this review, and I'll see you in the next video.